Sometimes when I'm thinking about us Before we got lost and we parted Back to back we would carry on then We'd do anything for what we started But this time we could break Welcome, everybody. It's good to be back with you after several weeks of absence. And, and it's good to be back with you, Blunty. I miss yeah, you, man. Yeah, it's good to be back with you, too, Joshua. Yeah, I'm having a... Let's see if that fixes itself. I'm having a little bit of a glitch on the camera. We uh, we have some technical issues that we're trying to... We tr we hopefully have sorted out. Yeah. We're working now, buddy. You were, you were glitching there for a minute. I think it cool. was on my end. I don't know. Um, yeah, we got, uh, we got a lot of news today in the world of FPV, uh, news from several weeks where we didn't cover news, uh, but there's some big stories have happened. Uh, Wesley Vardy's in trouble with his government. Yep. That's bad. It's true. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, what else? What else is notable? Uh, we've got big news from the FPV Freedom Coalition and flight tests. Oh yeah, that's true. I just did an interview with you guys, and and FPV uh, Flight Test Community Association put out a video uh, just yesterday with some big uh, news and a request to the community that we will be covering. Uh, so um, uh, let's start off though, as we usually do, with um, public service announcements. Just little. Oh, yeah, little damn. things we want people to know about. My OBS is just all effed up, dude. I, I don't know what I don't know what happened. How about that? Is that gonna work? There we go. I guess. Oh man, right before the stream started, my OBS was like, you know what? I don't think I'd like to work right now, and it's still con continuing to this moment. Uh, okay, continue. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got uh, the first PSA, like, uh, pretty much the only PSA today, is going to be uh, uh, multi-GP related. We want you to go uh, 
and vote if it's something you care about. Go check out the tracks and vote for the Multi GP Global Qualifier 2023. Um, this voting goes on till March the 13th, and this will be the track that everybody flies for the Global Qualifier. Uh, going for Multi GP, uh, you know, five inch open class mm -hmm. racing stuff. We've got eight track designers that were handpicked, and they've all got their track up on the uh, on the video here. You can see the flight path, and they've also got uh, tracks in Velocidrome. Yeah, this is kind of a big deal because uh, last year, you know the numbers. How many votes were there uh, last year? I, I'm not 100% sure. It's a couple hundred votes. But the main mm -hmm. thing was, like, the winner separated from the second by only a single vote. Mm -hmm. So it was really close. And yeah. uh, I don't want to, like, start drama, but there was some – not everyone loved last year's track. Let's put it – was that fair? Yeah, there was, I mean, obviously, since most, many people voted, you know, almost as many people voted for the second place track, you know, there was definitely right. some contention about which one people wanted for sure. So, uh, you know, and overall, I believe compared to the amount of people that actually qualified in the GQ, it was a lot less people. So, yeah. So uh, we want to get the word out there so that as many people as possible can look at these tracks, try these tracks and vote for these tracks. Uh, and you can sort of get your, your voice heard. Um, and, uh, I'm actually going to be sitting down and reviewing some of these tracks. Uh, and people may say, well, Bardwell's hardly a racer. Uh, what does his opinion matter? But I'm going to be sitting down with the Johnny five. We're going to do a record. We're going to look at them. We're going to get some opinions. I may sit down with a few other people and get some opinions, put that all together into a video. So, um, yeah, check those out. Uh, any of them stand out to you, Blunty? Uh, I haven't had a chance to erase them. Uh, my graphics card died again. Uh, oh, that may be so why I you're haven't... glitching right now. Yeah, I, it is for sure why I'm glitching. Oh, yep. damn. It's not my OBS uh, is what you're saying? Yep. So that'll be taken care of by next week. But yeah, I haven't had a chance to fly these yet because I don't have a way to play a sim. So. Oh, oh flip, man. Um, all righty. Well, maybe we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk more about them. But I would encourage you guys to go check them out. There's a link down in the video description. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, excited to, excited to see that. Um, okay, coming to number two, uh, the second story. Let's see if my freaking, here we go, ready? PSA out, in, okay, out. No, it's not working. God dang it. All right, we'll just so have to. Stupid. There we go. There I'll we just go. do it manual. We'll do it live. Okay. All right. Uh... Next I, up, uh, yes. There's been an update for the DJI Action 2. I wanted to let you guys know that uh, now you can get the gyro data for gyro flow if you update your Action 2. A lot of people were pretty excited about this. They did some beta testing for it, uh, but now it's released. So if you need to get that uh, get that gyro data, you got it. Yeah, I'm I'm can't believe we're living in a world where I see the word gyro flow in a DJI release note. Yeah. Like are, for real though. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool stuff, though. It's good to see. Yeah. I mean, the other companies, we saw Runcam and other companies embracing Gyroflow, so Absolutely. it's good to see DJI doing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, at th these days, Gyroflow is, I mean, it, there was a time when Gyroflow was this kind of weird, niche, small piece of software that you would only use if you couldn't afford real steady, some would have said. And these days, Gyroflow is used by many pros, even pros who have GoPros and you could use real steady choose Gyroflow because it's more configurable because it gets them the results they want. So, I mean, in many ways, I think Gyroflow support is like, if you don't have it, what's your, what's your problem? Uh, and it's good to see DJI getting on board. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, uh, if you've got an action two, get that firmware update and, uh, and get yourself some Gyroflow action. Uh, cause frankly, yeah. the built-in stabilization on the action two, not, not the best. It's okay, but it's not the best. Yeah. Uh, next up, this is a big one. And this one affects you directly because it relates to a uh, new development from the FPV Freedom Coalition. Uh, what's your title with them, Blunty? Uh, the VP of Government Affairs. You're a VP of Government Affairs. You That's know, correct. you look it. <laughs> That's what I've always been told. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you always uh, you, you say dress for the job you, you want, not the job you have. And yeah. you had a job as a cannabis <laughs> consultant, which I feel that's, like that's true. most people would not be surprised to learn. 
That's also true. Also true. Uh, and uh, the Flight Test Community Association. You guys have a plan in the works. And this is important for the people watching the news because there's something you need to do. Do not just go nod along, okay? Tell us about it, Plenty. Yeah, so um, we announced today on the Flight Test Community hey, Association friend, we have a really channel, important partnered up with us, um, is uh, we're trying to get the, um, basically we're going to petition Congress to get the FAA Reauthorization Act to add in a section to increase 250 gram registration limit that we currently have up to one kilogram. Okay. Uh, so that essentially this would mean that if you have any drone or UAS or anything under one kilogram, it would not have to be registered and therefore would not need remote ID. Also, uh, when we push the language forth later a few months down the road, we will be adding specific language to protect for a remote ID in case the FAA tries to get fancy and wants to, you know, basically attempt to change the rules for remote ID so that it's not based on registration, it's based on other factors like weight. We're trying mm -hmm. to add an addendum in there to also account for that as well. So the goal will be through this push to make sure that anything one kilogram or less will not need remote ID, will not need to be registered. And this is a big deal because the, the way that it works is Congress passes the FAA Reauthorization Act every five years. Basically, the FAA has to be sort of re people say where does the faa get the authority to pass all these rules and it's it's an act of congress a law that authorizes them every five years and that act tells the faa things that the congress wants the faa to do in fact that's why we've got remote id now because in one of those i don't remember the year do you know the year 2018 28 the in, last faa reauthorization in 2018 yes. congress said to the faa make remote id a thing and the FAA has to do that. Uh, so the reason this is a big deal is because if we petition the FAA to change the rules, the FAA, well, we know what happens. It's an uphill battle. But maybe if we petition our representatives that we could get something in here, then, then the FAA will have no choice but to do what we want. Is that the gist? Yeah, that's basically the idea. Um... Basically, yeah, if you can't get the FAA to do it, we can make Congress make them do it, essentially. I mean, that's, that's kind of the goal. That's the goal of the Reauthorization Act. That's how all this stuff works. They're at the will of, uh, you know, those things. So, yeah, the plan is to um, do our best to push that. And uh, that's based on a couple different things, mainly uh, the basis that 250 grams is sort of a made-up number. Mm -hmm. um, it comes from a really old rule, uh, like you trace it all the way back. And the same number is used from 1896, and it has no validity. There's no mm -hmm. math. There's no sources. There's no um, evidence. There's nothing like that. It's like a colloquially understood thing by them, mm -hmm. and they passed that forward and forward and forward through a ton of different papers, and that ended up being the reason that they got the uh, the calculation mm -hmm. to get uh, 250 grams. So yeah, right. we think that's obviously not doesn't make any sense. Our goal is to push that up to one kilogram. Um, and then in the meantime, we'll also be pushing something we call target level of safety, which is a way to know how safe drones are, UAFs are. We have basically worked through tasking groups um, and uh, under the direction of the FAA through these tasking groups, we've developed a safety protocol that they accept. And that safety protocol, that target level of safety causes us to be able to say like, hey, drones are this safe. And right now I believe that number is one in 10 million. Uh, like accidents, oh, we would expect like lethal accidents from a drone. Um, but but essentially, uh, we're using that compared to helicopters, planes, and other things to show that this is a safe thing to do. However, the issue is with target level of safety, that doesn't take long. I mean, that, I'm sorry, that takes a long time. That that's not right. fast. Right. So even if that goes into a reauthorization act dimension, or if even if we push that really hard, we expect five to ten years to be the case. Uh, where we see target level of safety actually come into effect. So that means we need a solution now. Mm -hmm. um, and to do that, uh, we're hoping that one kilogram is our solution uh, for the interim. So we can get everybody, so, you know, at least most of the people in the hobby flying right. recreationally uh, like we want. So. so so there's a couple objections people could make to this. And, and we did an interview, you, me, Dave Messina, and Josh Bixler. There's a video on the FTCA page, which we're linked to. We're not going to rehash all the arguments here on the news. But one of the arguments is this one kilogram limit. That's, you know, the whole thing is immoral. I hate it. It should be repealed entirely. 
And maybe you feel that way, and maybe I agree, but from a pragmatic level, that's not achievable today. And if, if we can get this raised from 250 grams to one kilogram, that will make life a lot better for a lot of people, even though it's not what we would really like. It's still a very, very uh, beneficial goal. And if you're in the, from the perspective of, I, I, I've checked out, like, I'm just not going to do any of this remote ID stuff. I've checked out. Please, for the people who don't do want to do that or don't have the option to do that, like Josh Bixler brought up STEM programs in school. They don't have the option to not comply with the law. All those kids in the STEM program, the school will not authorize a program that breaks the law. For everybody else, take the time. Go to this URL. This URL isn't in the show notes, is it? Is it? It really should be. Uh, no, it's, a, it's in that video. It's linked in that video. Yeah, I'm pasting this in the chat. I, whatever your position is on this, please do it for me. Do it for Blunty. Do it. Do it for, uh, for whoever you want. But go submit this letter. There is no downside to this. Okay. There's no downside to this. Take the time. Do it. I beg you. Go to the link. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Um, and if we don't get it, we'll be disappointed and sad, but we have to try these things. We have to continue fighting for what we think we can get as long as we can. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I put it this way in our little interview. I thought, here's the thing. If you hate the FAA and you want to stick it to – what would make the FAA more pissed off than to have Congress come to them and say, you must do what these hobbyists asked us to do? How – how frustrating would that be for them? Oh my God! Doesn't that taste sweet? Submit yeah. the letter. Submit the letter. How, how, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Okay. Pretty pretty easy. So. Okay. Uh, all right. Great. Enough about that. Yes. No? Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of regulatory bodies. Oh, the bad news. Yeah, we wanted to let you guys know about uh, Wesley Vardy. Um, some people saw Wesley Vardy's range testing. Um, he did quite a bit of different range testing. And then he also, um, yeah, had some other videos just doing some different testing and things. And um, unfortunately, uh, we found out uh, from Wes that he had to take down those videos because he is under investigation uh, by uh, CASA in Australia. Yeah, that's the Australian FAA. Yes. Um, yeah, what do we got here in the show notes? We got a post or anything from Wes? We got any statement? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have a statement from Wes there. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, uh, yeah, it's probably not a great idea to go into a lot of detail. Um, it's very early days. Uh, somebody submitted a formal complaint against him. He pulled down all his long range videos. Um, and there's no information really about what else is happening. Um, you know, we'll find out. I asked today and he just gave us a message before the show that he's still not heard anything else. So, yeah. So, um, this sucks. This, um, yep. Wesley was always putting himself out there for the work that he did and for the community. Uh, he, I'm sure that he knew the risks he was taking, uh, and now he has taken one for the team, if you will. Uh, and, uh, he will no, not be in a position to do any more of this work, I assume, uh, because it would just be too blatant. So, uh, perhaps someone else will take up that mantle. I don't know. No one, no one could replace, he had such a high quality of work such good quality of videos. Uh, it's a great loss to the FPV community that he won't be able to continue this work. Uh, people have asked, is there anything we can do in terms of an activist? Can we write letters? Can we, I don't know. Uh, and I suspect uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, I obviously, Wes should Wes, speak for himself. Wes has, Wes has specifically asked us not to do that. So. Right. I, I, I yeah. thought so. I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah. At this point, it will only piss them off, I think, and make them less inclined to go easy on him. It will not, if they get a bunch of letters or you know people marching, picketing outside their office, it will not change their opinion about what to do with him, except for the worse. So uh, we just got to, I mean, if he gets fined, perhaps there will be a GoFundMe to help pay his fine. I'm just speculating. But until all that stuff works out, 
the only thing to do is to just be quiet, let him handle it. And if he makes any statements or requests, then so be it. But uh, that's the world yep. we live in. Yep. Yeah, we just wanted to let you guys know about that. And uh, yeah, thoughts are with Wes. Hopefully he can uh, get that all figured out. And they, you know, we talked uh, in other places. Basically, you know, typically the, if the FAA contacts you in the U.S. and you haven't had previous issues before, you haven't been warned or anything, typically yeah. you just get a message to say, hey, uh, you can't do this. You shouldn't be doing this. Here's why. Uh, don't do this again. You know, you get a yep. warning and you're not going to get a big issue. Um, hopefully CASA does the same thing, but um, yeah, we don't know for sure. So, Oh, Toilet Duck says we haven't done any Wes, Wes any favors by shining a spotlight on this. Uh, I mean, it's not like the information wasn't out there. People are wondering yep. why his videos got taken down. This is why his videos got taken down. He made a public yep. statement about it on the Express Alaris forum and, you know, there you go. Um, also, all right. we did contact him privately. So, yeah. Um, okay. Um, there we go. Uh, let's move on. Yep. Uh, next up, sorted out. We've got a teaser by Foxier, and we don't mm -hmm. necessarily know what it is, but we figured we would show uh, show that teaser and see what people think about this, so we could let them know something's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had one of these in a while. Oh, I mean, there's not a lot to go on there. There's not a lot to go on, but I figured we would uh, do yeah. some quick speculation and at least throw it up on the stream. So, uh... Yeah. What do we see here? A new vision adventure. What does vision mean? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously camera, right? But yeah, it's not clear why you have uh, multiple things that look e the same. They're basically small boxes, um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But yeah, it could be um, like session replacement cameras. Oh. It, doesn't really look, it doesn't really look to me like uh, FPV cameras. I mean, it could be, but you've got like a flat one there and you've got a one yeah. with... Uh, you know that taller bit and i don't know they don't necessarily reek of fpv cameras to me if so they'd be much bigger at least appearance wise they seemed like they would be much bigger you could see how far down that foxier logo goes mm -hmm. um you know that would be wider a much much longer i guess the way to say it would be than, than our typical camera so yeah well are we guessing that is three cameras in different form factors it kind of looks like they just copied two to make it look fancy but it's hard to tell <laughs> okay maybe yeah. All right, well, thanks for the teaser, Foxier, and uh, you have made it yeah. to the news. Your teaser yeah. worked. We'll cover it when uh, when it finally comes out. For yeah. sure. Um, next up, guess what? Yeah. yeah. Time for we plugs. Put time for plugs. We're going to do our plugs before we continue. Uh, we got to pay the bills. We definitely got to pay the bills. Um, and we're going to start by reminding you about my website, fpvknowitall.com, home of the ultimate FPV shopping list. When you're w looking for a product recommendation in any category, just about any category, uh, like you're wondering, hey, what's a good uh, analog, analog systems? What's some good analog goggles to get today? Well, I got some suggestions at different price ranges, a little bit of discussion about why you might pick this one, and of course, some product links to where you can pick it up. Uh, when it, uh, this is updated pretty regularly, uh, little things get updated here and there. And, uh, just anytime you're wondering what my recommendation is, that's where you can go to get it. You can always ask me, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've also got my website, it's blunty.com, where you can check out my links, including a place you can sign up for my Patreon. If you like to just give me some money, or you, <laughs> if you want to give me some money to do some work, uh, you can hire me for a troubleshooting call. So that's a $50 flat rate per hour, and I'm happy to hop on a phone call with you and dedicate my, my hour. Uh, we can do uh, remote troubleshooting over video. I can remote it, desktop into your computer, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, and always just a reminder, if you just want to chat and you have a question, just the same as Bardwell's messages are open, my messages are open. So you can always shoot me an email or Discord message sure. um, to get some help as well. So. Yeah, everybody, uh, sometimes people say, hey, Bardwell, is it okay if I ask you a question? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes people are like, time. yeah. Like, I'm wasting your time. I'm so sorry, but here's a question. I'm like, no, nah, you're, that's, that's what my time's for. <laughs> yeah, emails, DMs are open. 
the that's that's been my policy forever and i don't think it'll ever change uh yeah. the only thing i will charge you for is if you want me to talk just to you yes. for an hour exactly. and only think about you yeah dedicated time costs money yeah um so uh and your rate of 50 dollars an hour is very very reasonable honestly so uh especially considering how much knowledge you bring to the table uh yeah. we got a plug here another plug plug time for the Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips channel, people have been complaining that the thumbnail from the Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips channel was the same as the thumbnail from my main channel. And now you get Cowboy Joshua. <laughs> yeah. That, so that we changed you do. That. Oh, if you ever get if you ever don't get to watch the entire live stream and you just want the highlights or if you're trying to find a discussion topic from a previous live stream, Check out the JB live stream. Well, we broke 8,000 subscribers. That's very exciting, Blunty. Yeah, and we're really uh, getting a um, a good base of, of questions and answers for people now. I think at this point, I'm starting to, we're starting to see a lot more people find them by search, by asking uh -huh. questions, and they're getting a lot of solutions from stuff you've popped in on live streams. So lots, lots of good information there. Yeah, and now you started out, you posted a couple shorts, and then it seems like you didn't post any more shorts. I yeah, guess shorts didn't it, really work out. Yeah, uh, the format doesn't make any sense because YouTube doesn't seem to understand to send them to drone people. So we just get a bunch of confused people that have no idea what we're talking about with no context. Uh, it, it, it just basically it seems to achieve nothing. I mean, some drone people are seeing that, but most people are like, I don't know what this is. What is that? Why is I'm this so in confused. my feed? Yeah, so I'm definitely thinking about uh, marking some things off that are very general that maybe we could throw yeah. in shorts or trying to do more edited content when I get my graphics card back where we yeah. can maybe get like pop-ins to the shorts to explain more about what's happening, that sort of thing. But um, yeah. for the time being, that's not, not doing great. So. All righty. Uh, and plus, like the, you can monetize shorts now, but the monetization is it's, like ridiculously low. Yeah, normally you get three to six dollars per thousand views on most videos. On a that YouTube we do. video. Yeah, and then uh, on shorts you get about eight cents to ten <laughs> cents, something like that, per thousand views. So, well, I guess I guess shorts are tailored towards people putting up, you know, five shorts a day, getting millions of views. Those people are getting yes. like a few hundreds of dollars. Yeah, still not getting very much money. Uh, I don't know. I don't. It doesn't seem worth it to me. Yeah, but, they don't uh, seem super helpful for people, and they're not worth the money. So I think we're we're not yeah. doing shorts right now. We we might come yeah. back to that. But. All right, and then uh, lastly, I want to just plug searchfpv.com. Searchfpv.com is a multi-store FPV-centric search engine. Uh, we've got stores in lots of different countries, so you can pick your region if you just want to pick a certain region. Only stores in that region. Canada. Uh, you could select all, and you can search for in-stock items only, like, uh, let's see, Darwin FPV. We talked about Darwin FPV on the new product roundup. Let's see who's got Darwin FPV in stock, just as a way of example. Takes a second. But then it comes back. It shows you all the Darwin FPV stuff that's in stock at all these different stores. That's actually not very many, it's not as many results as I kind of expected, but there you go. There's what it is. Uh, check that out anytime you're looking for FPV stuff and you're not sure where to find it. Uh, there we go. Those are our plugs. Thank you guys for sticking around for those. Now on with the news. Yeah, on to the next story. Um, and our next story is about an open source release that we're... Uh, it seems pretty exciting, at least a pretty cool option for people who are interested in developing stuff. Uh, we've got SP Racing, Pixel OSD, um, has been published open source in version one. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, cool, what the, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so Pixel OSD is basically like um, uh, true canvas mode. Right, essentially, mm -hmm. my understanding is it's essentially like true canvas mode where you can show pixels and text however you want. Um, mm. So it's not a character-based OSD. I believe it can be. It's a graphical. But it's not necessary. But it is. It is typically, a, I believe, a graphical and text-based. Yeah. Uh huh. Like you can uh, see like, here, so there's he's. Pixel, yeah. There's pixel generation there. Yeah. Yeah. Here he's drawing characters over each other, which you can't do on a pixel-based OSD or a character-based OSD. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so this is basically a replacement for uh, in software, essentially, running on um, the H7 processor or the L4 processor, um, which are some of the higher-end STM processors. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have an H7 or an L4, you can basically run this OSD entirely in software. So uh, there's no, you know, you don't have to have that extra chip, that max chip that does cost money. You know, manufacturers have to pay for that chip. And we've seen people uh, emulate it in different ways that aren't as supported. Basically, Newbie Drone has done similar things to that, but it's a little more proprietary. Yeah. Um, and until this point, so was, uh, this is Dominic Clifton, for anybody who doesn't know, this is his thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was also proprietary with him, but he has decided to release it in open source in hopes that people will work on it. He very specifically listed um, that he's excited to see what people make. So Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a really cool technology. Uh, it's odd that more flight controllers haven't, developed it or supported it some of that might be because they don't have h7 processors h7s are started to kind of look like they were going to get super popular and then kind of back seems like they almost backed off uh i don't know if that's due to availability of f7s or what um but uh now that it's open source potentially anybody could implement it uh and and uh we may see flight controllers out there with it. I guess it's not that useful, though, because if Betaflight doesn't support, if Betaflight only supports a character-based OSD, then all the potential new stuff would have to be in, like, a proprietary firmware repo that isn't generally supported. Uh, but then again, I guess that's the promise of open source, right? Yeah. Um, I would assume that this does also support characters, but maybe it, maybe it doesn't. Well, box. I'm sorry. I don't mean to imply that it doesn't, but yeah. what I mean is if the big advantage of it is that it's great, it could be graphical that if it was yeah. only character based because beta flight only supports character, then you're not really, you're not really, what's the benefit over just to putting a max chip on the flight control. I think the, yeah, my understanding is the benefit is cost. So you don't have to oh, pay you for don't have max to pay chip for... on every board. Oh, yeah. okay. That makes sense. And then uh, for yeah. instance, Dominic Clifton also, does SPI, but in a different way, like integrated into the chip, basically on his H sevens as well. So sort of everything in one packet, you know, as much things as you can cram into software, so you can save that money on hardware. Okay. Is kind of the idea there. Well, that makes sense. Quick Flash points out it's cheaper and smaller. It takes up less space on the PCB right. than the Max also chip, which is up. fairly substantial. Yeah. Uh, costs less money. So even if it was only character based, it would still uh, be an advantage. And now that it's yeah, open source. You... Maybe there's no reason yeah, not you, to do it. I was going to say, if you think about it, maybe you could make up the cost of the Max chip by using an H7 and they get other benefits on your board design too, right? Maybe. Yeah. Um, the OSD chip is the biggest weight on Whoop AIOs. Is it lighter? Uh, he actually has, uh, let's see. He actually has here some examples of how much space it takes up on the PCB. Well, I guess one of the advantages is that you can, I mean, it doesn't look like it's actually taking up less square millimeters than a max chip, but it does look like there's more flexibility in where you place those components so that you right. can, uh, you can sort of squeeze them in wherever you uh, want to. Um, very cool. Very cool. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. I wonder what was behind his decision to make it public. I mean, we don't know. It was closed source yeah, for a sure. long time, and he just opened it. Yeah, not 100% not sure, but yeah, cool to see that for sure. All righty. Well, manufacturers get a, For now, for users, this is meaningless. But for manufacturers and board designers, uh, this is maybe something interesting. Uh, next up, we uh, have a story about... Uh, the, the, the title is you can fly at night now. Well, there's some details there that we need to sort out. Uh, it's not quite that simple. Yeah. So essentially for anybody who has ever tried to request a uh, Lance in the U S which is where you request uh, flights in authorized airspace, basically like mm -hmm. in restricted, some sort of restricted authorized airspace. Um, typically you hit the button and you request to fly, but you could not do that previously at night. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, even though recreational pilots are allowed to fly at night, Lance would not allow you to authorize at night, even if you're flying recreationally. Mm -hmm. So um, now that's the thing you can do. So now no. you can uh, request Lance flights at night. I believe Aloft is getting updated if it's not updated yet. Um, but basically, this is a new system they've added into Lance. So you should see it roll out pretty soon if it hasn't rolled out yet. So it was something that you so were supposed little, little... to be allowed to do 
but then the the software wouldn't actually let you get away with it. Correct. Yeah, there was nothing in the rules that said you couldn't. It was just a restriction that was uh, based in the in the Lance system, and now that's been yeah. fixed. So, uh, and of course, commercial operators, one of seven operators, still would need a, a waiver to fly at night. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I believe that. Well, um, is that did that change? I can't that remember changed. how it works after the change. Yeah, yeah. I think that changed. So now you can just fly at night without a waiver. Um, but when they, I think had that to... happened when they added the flight over people stuff, right? Yes, yes. That's cool. I, I'm going to assume we're right and move on before anybody okay. tells me I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't fly at night. I did so my, it's never. Come I did up. my 107 right before those changes. So same, and I don't think I've updated yeah. it. So I probably can't fly at night, but I don't fly at night, so it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, we've got an event coming up. We always like to keep you guys apprised of latest events. By the way, if you've got events that are coming up that you would like us to a advertise for you uh, in the United States or anywhere in the world, uh, then email us, news at fpvknowitall.com. In fact, you can email news at fpvknowitall.com with any submissions that you think should be on the news. That's how to get something submitted. Uh, just for the record. And this event is the Ice Storm event in uh, we, Milwaukee. We missed, we missed the story. So let's, real quick, let's... Uh... Oh, well, I've already plugged it. Can we just go out of order? Okay. Sorry. Yep. All right. So I, yep. I always so let's do that. Take a look at the Ice Storm event in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that was happening in case anybody wasn't aware. Uh, from April the 28th to the 30th. Um, yeah, that's one of the multi-GP's uh, uh, bigger races. So... It's an indoor race at the Pettit National Ice Center. That's kind of interesting. It's, it was like, was there much ice yeah. in April in Milwaukee? No, it's indoors. Okay. Wh why? Yeah, and there's a t tiny trainer race and a five-inch open race. Oh, well, gosh dang it. You know I'm a big fan of tiny trainer races. Uh, that's kind of cool. It's like yeah, they I had think fan this is the second there. time they did it. I believe they did one last year. Let's look at the video. Yeah. Oh, stabilized. Oh, very fancy. Zoop, 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 zoop. Oh, very fancy. Man, that's a serious race. Verano showed up. All right. Is there, uh, are there prizes? I'm not 100% sure. I wasn't able to get too much more info than what's on the page there. So. That happened last year, too. <laughs> all righty uh great uh check out that link in the video description if you would like to go to that and now the story that i accidentally skipped over yeah we wanted to let you guys know about fpv outreach um fpv outreach is a um basically a program to give kids free fpv gear um and this is i believe started by jesse perkins but there's quite a few people now um, that are work that are founders of this, um, and they are attempting to donate FPV toys and other toys eventually, I believe, um, to children that need them. Um, so basically, uh, there's going to be a sale once a month for sticker sheets. Um, you can also subscribe, um, and all those profits from the sticker sheets go to uh, get kids uh, FPV gear and toys. Nice. Uh, so presumably, the sticker sheets will be, you know, it'll be some donation level pricing. Uh... And that you'll get a sticker sheet as thanks yeah, for you donating. Click, yeah, if you, yeah, you can just click there to support, and then they'll give you a page where you can choose how to uh, donate 15 how to support. bucks. Donate artwork, make one-time donation. That's really cool. Jesse Perkins is a good dude, and this seems right up his alley. So uh, definitely buy an overpriced T-shirt, not designed yet. <laughs> That's nice. Um, I can't, uh, I can't w imagine what a kid in a hospital with a with an uh, FPV car would get up to. I can't imagine actually. <laughs> um, I've actually had I actually had one of those diatone those, that probably that very same little diatone car. Those things are fun as shit. They're so yeah. fun. Yeah, especially for someone who can't get out of the hospital bed or is stuck in the hospital, it's it would be it's cool for to get these guys with some goggles on and then, you know getting around in some way or another. So for sure, yeah, it's a good uh, a good uh, good thing fpvoutreach.com is where you can donate to that uh, and then yeah. I'm going to let you pick the next story so I don't screw it up uh, next up we've got a we wanted to let you know uh, that the USAF the US Air Force Museum drone race happened 
uh, and we've got the winners for you. So uh, we wanted to let you know, yeah, about how that event went, basically. All right. So that concluded. Um, and uh, we had in the pro class, we had T-Dog win with an Iron Man. So T-Dog is oh. still dominant in the whoop scene. Um, and then he got paid out 1200 bucks and 200 for top qualifier. AK got 800 bucks in second place. Proximo got 500 bucks in third place. And Warden FPV got uh, 300 bucks in fourth place. Also, sport class. Uh, first was Gate Hunter. Second was Dio GTS. Third was Zach Mackina. And fourth was Condor FPV. So we want to give congratulations to those guys. And then also let you know that next year we'll, they'll be doing the same race. The tickets will go on sale in January. And that'll be February 23rd to the 25th. So if you want to get, get planning for that ahead of time. This is this is everybody who uh, was there, and people who watched it. I just hear so many positive things about this race. Uh, we bleed FPV, of course, the the big sponsor, uh, and so thanks to them for sponsoring that. Um, if you have the chance, if you're into whoop racing, and you have the chance to go, whether as a pilot or as a spectator, it's it's well worth uh, going to. I mean, like, is it? Do you think it is the premier? Uh, I guess there's uh, Whooptopia is is a pretty yeah. big one in Denver. Yeah, Whooptopia is probably the biggest one, I think. Well, well yeah, Whooptopia is in Arizona, I believe, typically. Oh, what's... so Whooptopia, and then Whoop Wars was in uh, Denver for a while, but I'm not sure if yeah. that's still happening. There's a so. lot of big Whoop races, uh, in, in the yeah. USA. That's interesting. This is certainly up there. Um, so congratulations to the winners and to everybody who participated. Uh, yeah. Flipping heck. Boy, Blunty, it's not my day. I just closed a window. All right, it'll be it'll be all right. Next we're up, gonna, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna read super chats. Yes. Oh, before I even clicked on the right the, title. Before we get to the end. Yep. Uh, we only have one super chat, which is from Flyborg FPV. Thanks for a twenty dollars super chat, Flyborg FPV. Just saying, thanks for the awesome content, Blunty and Bardwell. I take this opportunity to formally challenge Bardwell to a race with a tiny trainer or a Spec Seven. Location of your choice. Winner gets 350 bucks or takes both drones. For le- uh, that's a bold... So first of all, thank you for the super chat. I'm already up 20 bucks on you. So... Uh, in order to de- decide whether I will take that bet, I'm going to go to your YouTube channel. Oh. All right. Well... Like you don't have any racing footage up there. This is the guy who does the uh, portrait painting with a drone. <laughs> I cannot believe this nonsense. I cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> this is I still am not sure. I think this is real, but I still am not a hundred percent sure this isn't fake and he's just trolling. I think it's real, I'm, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know. What do you think, Blunty? Uh, <laughs> from what we saw there, it looks fake. I mean, I would like to see the whole painting done if it's actually happening, because it looks like he's just smashing the drone a couple times and then sharing the uh the picture afterwards if, but. if it's fake whether it's fake if it's real it's magic and if it's fake it's a fantastic a fantastic troll uh so either way flyborg i'm impressed i don't know if i'm going to accept a challenge to race you for 350 bucks but uh i appreciate the uh he says he's using a stencil that would that would make a that would be make it gotcha. make more sense He's just kind of dabbing it on with the stencil. Okay, that makes more sense. What, what is it? Why is it with a drone then? Anyway. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, thank you, Flyboard, for the super chat. Um, now we go into it's barely news. Uh, little stories that we wanted, thought were interesting enough to tell you about, but that we didn't really have a lot more to say about. So, um, and the first one. Is the flying phone case what yeah um heck? we've uh seen i don't know if you can remember but there was basically a phone that advertised to be a flyable uh, and it mm-hmm. had these little tiny propellers on it we showed it on the news a long time ago mm-hmm. and it was kind of debunked by a bunch of this, people there it is there uh, it is debunked yeah, as there fake. You go. 
Um, uh, but this guy made one that works. So yeah, kind of cool. Old Peter Sh Peter Schrippel helped uh, helped uh, debunk it as fake, and then it looks like Mark Rober and Peter Schrippel made one, and then this guy made it even more. Uh, it's a bicopter design. Very clever. Uh, we know that bicopters are a thing that can exist. And it's just a phone case that holds your phone and hovers. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, not, not, not super useful, but, uh, no. neat is it, is it, does it just hover in place? Is that all it does? I believe so. Yeah. What is it running? Is it running RG pilot? I have no idea. That part I do not know. I mean, if it's going to hover in place, you'd think it was running something like RG Pilot, maybe have a downward facing optical flow sensor or something. Attitude and position it, hold. It does have uh, like a flow sensor on it for sure. Wow. Yeah, and then it can, you know, you got a tripod in the air. See, look, you just put it where you want it and it doesn't stay in the same place. Yeah, uh, it probably moves. gets better. Yeah. It probably gets better over time. No, oh, yeah, look, it's got a. Looks like it's got a, a IR or a sonar optical flow sensor. This is a hell of a project. This is a great video. 151,000 views. Good. I'm happy to see this video is getting uh, some attention. That's amazing. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right. Well, yeah, now we all we need is if only there were a way to have a camera that could take pictures from a drone without having to put your phone on it. Ah, well, it'll never happen. <laughs> uh, next up, we've next got... Next up, we've uh, got a uh, concept boat, uh, which I thought was pretty uh, crazy, but also fits very much in barely news. Um... My company has developed a 160-foot super yacht concept uh, that would be possibly piloted with a VTOL that's attached to it. Oh. So oh, you take you know, off from the VTOL, and then you drive the boat. So I saw I saw a, 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 a TikTok where a person was driving a yacht, and the, the problem, uh, I mean, I've driven small boats, and they're very hard to steer because you can't see the whole gosh dang boat. They put the... They put the the pilots, captains, whatever wheel, they put the steering wheel all the way in the back of the boat. And then the boat's like this. And you're like, how am I going to freaking park this thing? Parking, I think is what they call it. Right. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. And so this, uh, TikTok, the guy had a remote control for the yacht and he was like standing on the bow. So he could literally drive the thing in. And I thought I was like, that's pretty damn cool. But th so this is solving a similar problem. Yes. I guess. Yep. Uh, it's also, nice. they also talk about just flying your VTOL around and having the boat follow you. Not sure how practical the applications are, but it does seem uh, like an interesting concept. Yeah. Very cool. Oh my God. Oh, no, wait. Uh, that's not a drone. It's a VTOL. Yeah. That's a car. That's a, like a VTOL car. Yes. Oh, oh, that's a that's. I thought it was just like a drone you put up and let you steer the boat. No, it's like you could like use that to go to no, shore or something. You're in it, and then the boat follows you. That's the idea. Yeah. Well, what's the range of that? Can why would I want to do that? Why wouldn't I just be on the boat? Why would I want to be flying and having the boat following me when I could just drive the boat? That doesn't make sense. Now, now I hate it. I've changed my mind. Uh, what right. I imagined it was was cool to me, but what it actually is, I think, is silly. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Spidar. Spidar. It's a Spidar. The Spidar is the spherically vectorable and distributed rotors-assisted air ground amphibious quadruped robot. Okay. You. Uh, that's a backronym, clearly. Yes. Oh my god. If you turn on the audio for this. Okay. I don't know what I expected. Yeah. It is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so it's so using, they're, they're using the motors? Yeah, drone 
drone motors with uh, the vectoring with the ducts and stuff to like make a robot walk with just those, like articulating through. I see. Through all drone like uh, ducting like and the, motors. The joints would be like too weak to hold all of the weight and create all the torque right. they need. Uh, so the the th the props basically just take weight off selectively to make it seem like it's lighter than it is. Oh my god! And it can fly. It's gonna take off. Yeah, that's. It? Oh shit! Yes. Oh shit! Oh look at those motors wobble! Wow, the pit controller is losing its freaking mind. Yeah, this is definitely still in testing. Oh no! It's gonna transform. Shut up! <laughs> what is it transforming into? <laughs> oh, just a. Nothing. Just a, just a wider drone. Oh, yeah. Just a wider drone. Okay. Um, that, oh. Kind of a neat concept. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything like that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's cool, but also somewhat terrifying. Good to yes. know. Yes, that's fair. Um, all right, next up. All right. Uh, I titled this next one, uh, Some Birds Aren't Real Now. Uh, yeah. We've heard about uh, birds aren't real. Well, it turns out some birds now actually aren't real because researchers are turning dead birds into spy drones to spy on people. What? This is a taxidermy bird, isn't it? That's correct. With a drone yeah, stuffed, inside of it. Stuffed dead birds are getting drones, propellers, wings, etc. And then they're using them to spy on people because they look like real birds. Do the wings flap or does it like have a, a yes. vertical... The wings, the it literally flies? Case, they flap, yeah. <gasps> Shut up! It's, it's an ornithopter, you know, like an, or, like an ornithopter. If you scroll well, to sure. the top, there's a video at the top. Okay. Shut up! What the fuck? So now if somebody tells you they see a bird and it's not real, this it's, is, it's possible. This is like some necromancer shit. Like, really... <laughs> Like it? Oh, shut up! This is no burn him at the stake. Nope, that's the line. That you crossed the line right there. Whoever did that, <laughs> burn him at the stake. That's where I'm at. That's not okay. That's creepy as fuck. The flapping wings. I don't know why, but the flapping wings really creep me out. It nope. is definitely creepy. It looks like a bird. Yes. It's a, luckily, that's the goal. But yeah, it's very weird. I don't like it. Very that's, weird stuff. That's creepy, and I don't like it. Good, th good work, researchers. That's who, that's who the, you know. That's the problem with the world today, Blunty. Researchers. That's where <laughs> all the trouble comes from. We need to watch out for them. <laughs> okay. Got to be careful. Uh, next up. All right. Next up, uh, we got a tiny project to suck away uh, get rid of soldering fumes uh, automatically with a little pcb project uh so it's kind of neat mm, let's see yeah and boards is on oh so it detects when he takes the soldering iron out and turns the fan yes. on yes where's the fan where's the fan though that's my problem uh, Right, I believe it's just a uh, oh okay, you know, just a, just to control a separate like external fan. Oh okay, yeah my oh he's got it under his desk. That's my problem is I have a fan on my desk and it's off in the corner, and it's always such a pain in the ass to pull it out when I'm soldering that I'm just like ah eh, I just hold my breath. So when I solder I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's literally how I saw her. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my mom's knocks on the door and she's like, what are you doing in there? I'm like, nothing, mom. Well, if you do want to use a fan and you want it to be powered, when you take the soldering iron out, uh, you mm -hmm. can do that now. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Uh, 3D printing antennas. That's pretty cool. Uh, because antenna design requires a lot of sort of trial and error and development and bending metal or printing circuit boards is, uh, you know, it's not as simple as 3D printing. So now we can 3D print antennas. Yeah, um, they were able to make a, um, a polymer uh, that basically is dielectric. It's dielectric resin. 
and they use this dielectric resin to print designs for um, for RF for antennas. And it looks like you can create these three dimensional antenna designs that would be like really impossible to create any other way. Like, look at this nonsense. Yeah, it definitely kind of... seems like uh, it, it, it's sort of a an extension of what you can do typically. So, these are all antennas, presumably. Yes, antenna designs. What yep. the fuck? That's badass. Is this a, like a uh, good they, antenna? In the, in the article, they say that a liter of this material is eighteen hundred dollars currently. Well, uh, I'm gonna stick to Gatorade. But uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely don't want to be chugging this stuff. But somewhere, uh, somewhere out there is someone who wants to solve whatever problem this antenna solves. Look at this E field animation. What is it? Well, hopefully, what are doing here? you know, this can basically solve all kinds of different things, you know, over time as they are able to make different designs with this and the stuff gets cheaper. And you know, obviously, lenses. 3D printing is going to be the future. So, RF lenses. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Never assume. Oh, yeah. Damn. That's really cool. Yeah. Neat stuff from uh, coming out of there. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that for sure. All right. And uh, lastly, always love a story about someone being rescued with drones. Yeah, to top it off, as we typically do, we've got a uh, good story about somebody getting uh, yeah, rescued by a drone. And we've got another case where there was a missing boy out in the woods. And uh, thanks to an infrared camera drone, uh, he was able to be found and rescued. Uh, safe, safe and secure. That's not a boy. That's a, that's a baby Bigfoot if I ever saw one. Look at that. Come on. Tell me that's a human child. It's a cover story. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here they are, just like an E.T. They swoop in, they put them in a truck, they carry them away. Oh, we found a human boy. Yeah, as if. Uh, infrared drones finding Bigfoot babies in the woods. That's, how, that's what that story should be. Um, it's okay, I understand, Blunty. Not everybody's ready to speak the truth. Fair enough. <laughs> and that's going to bring us, are you glad it's over? You you missed the news right up until you remembered what an ass I am half the time. And now you're like, this son of a bitch, go back on vacation. That's okay. <laughs> oh, we're done. Yeah, we're, we made it to the end of the news. So just a reminder, yeah. don't forget uh, to go to news at fppknowitall.com and make a submission uh, to the news to let us know what's going on. Yeah. So. All right. We'll see you next week, 6 p.m. Cool. Tuesday, as yep. usual. Uh, Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.